Bannock House today. We actually have a restaurant on Fifth Avenue in Cameron here in North Central in Regina. We've been here for about 18 months so far. Um, in this last year, we've added on a food trailer to supplement our brick and mortar restaurant. The food trailer is at the back of the uh, wall here, and we're serving up indigenous cuisine. So we have bannock, um, we have bison, we have some Indian tacos, Indian uh, tacos made with uh, bison chili, and we have desserts available for you. So, um, bannock. How many people here are uh, bannock professionals? <laughs> Anyone? Interesting thing is uh, when we started the restaurant, uh, we did a little poll across Canada to find out um, how many indigenous restaurants there were actually going on in Canada. And when we started in 2016, there was only eight indigenous restaurants all the way across Canada. Um, we are the only one as a sit-down restaurant in, Sas in Saskatchewan, but there are a few caterers out in Saskatoon and North Battleford. So we're the first to hit hit the uh, Regina Sea. So I'm going to show you how we make our bannock. I won't give you the exact ingredients. I have them here in the bowl, but um, so you'll have to kind of taste and try to figure that one out here on your own. But the number one key, made with love. So you have to make sure that your water is warm, not too hot. You're using an active yeast. So the first part of it, you have your three main ingredients. You have your active, your water, your active yeast, your salt, and your sugar. So this takes, this process here, you want to make sure that the, all of the granules of sugar have melted and all of the yeast has dissolved. I'm not making bannock on site today, so I didn't bring all of my regular um, tools that I make, but I usually have a whisk here, and tomorrow if you're here again, we'll be making bannock again at the same time. So the warm water is going to help that sugar melt and it's going to help the yeast activate. It'll start to activate. I'm going to still start just going to continue to chit chat a little bit through this process and if anybody has any questions about Bannock because you'll see if this is on the camera. Make sure that it's in the you'll actually start to see it bubbling and activating. This, in within 15 minutes, this whole area will just have a thick foam on top. When that foam becomes um, a really high, foamy, dense, well, probably about an inch and a half, two inches, you know that's a perfect time to start adding your dry ingredients and your oil. But, so I'll, a little bit of background on Bannock. Um, so Bannock, normally an indigenous food. However, there is, when you start to investigate it a little bit more, prior to um, colonization, there was no flour, there was no baking powder, any of those kinds of things. So the way bannock was made was with your water, with your basics, but it was done by um, corn. And so grinding down the corn and then making that bread. So very traditional, every culture, pretty much running the restaurant, we have people who come in all the time and say, hey, that reminds me of this kind of bread. Uh, and a scone or a scone. Um, I know in um, there's a, a, a new a group of newcomers that come into the restaurant. And they're from Ghana. It's like almost like a fried bread that they have. So everybody has something similar to it. Um, the restaurant. Has anybody been to the restaurant? No, nobody's been down there. How many? Anybody in the North Central area, we're like all from Yorkton. within that North Central area? Anybody from? The, we're these, all from Regina. These kids are all from Yorkton. All from Yorkton. Yeah, okay. They're from Sacred Heart. Okay, well, welcome, welcome. So, North Central in, in um, Regina is one of our older neighborhoods. Um, it is a lower income neighborhood, so it's your working class families, um, your single parents, um, that kind of thing. Um, within the last 
probably about 12 years or so. There's a lot of the restaurants have moved out of the court area. Um, our main superstore has moved out of our area. 7-Eleven has moved out of our area. So there's only a couple of main, main food sources there, which is 7-Eleven's uh, uh, closed down. So now we have a corner convenience store and a McDonald's. So it's really important for us, what we're doing in the community is we, um, we bring in work students, we work with community um, organizations and we bring in work students and we do placements um, and uh, we're doing all of our food is prepped in-house, all of our soups are made fresh daily, our bison is hand-pressed, um, all of our chilies handmade, so even our french fries, home cut fresh fries, so nothing in our restaurant is processed or prepackaged. Okay, just to get, keep going with the time of things, I uh, don't have the foam here tomorrow, I'll have better foam, um, but you'll have a foam. What you do after you get that nice foam on there, so you would just mix in your flour. And your oil. You'll find lots of different recipes online for bannock. There are three different main types of bannock. There's your yeast fry bread, which is I'm making today. It contains a yeast and sugar in that yeast fry bread. Um, it's the most popular today. It can, it's versatile. It could be made into burgers like we are today with the bison burgers, loaded burgers. We've done pizza. We've done um, bannock wrapped hot dogs. Um, our desserts are made with it, so it's the most versatile. The other that you'll see or hear is a traditional. That traditional is also a fried bread, but it has no sugar and it has no yeast in it. That was um, more an elder um, bannock for soup, ceremony, um, and conscious if you're diabetic. So then the third type bannock that we also serve in the restaurant is uh, a baked bannock. A baked bannock is um, no sugar, so it is your traditional bannock, so no sugar, no yeast, but you can add anything you like into it, raisins, um, Saskatoon berries, all kinds of things. And um, the baked bannock, again, another more traditional, more ceremonial bread. So this needs to be kneaded. And again, for time, um, because we don't have um, this process um, completely, takes about an hour and 45 minutes. So when I get up in the morning and I have the restaurant opening at 9, I have to make sure that I am there about 7, 7.30, so I have uh, bread to go first thing in the morning. We do, at the restaurant also, um, breakfast sandwiches um, with egg, ham, um, it uh, Italian sausage, um, we also do um, bannock French toast, <laughs> so you can pretty much do anything with the bannock. So for the time, what I would do normally once I get it at this, at this state, I would just cover it with a warm, well, usually my apron would go over or a warm cloth and I let that rise for another hour. It'll end up rising to a, probably about this high here and sometimes it'll start to go over just to poke it, push it back down. You can deflate it, you know, three or four times in that process and that this bannock will stay for about two and a half, three hours. It's dependent on how warm it is outside, how cold it is outside, what your humidity is in your house. So there's so many different factors on it because of that active yeast that is in the, in the bread. So, in the restaurant, and uh, here if you're having any of our bannock, we do have samples for you today. But we do that bannock off probably about every three hours. A uh, fresh batch is made and new bannock goes out. So once it does rise, so about an hour, you'll see it nice and high. You just poke it down, grab a piece like I would here. And this would be just like your traditional. Um, if I was doing with the no yeast, no sugar, exact same way, um, you just don't go through the rise process. So you would get to this part of the dough and then we'll, I'll show you how to fry it here. And this, I, I go from the middle and push outward. 
I make it into about a size of a burger bun. So then you can make desserts, you can make burgers, make anything you want with it. Some people will make it smaller, but you gotta make sure that you have it low enough and put, use your fingers to put a few little air holes into it because if you don't, it, gets, it won't cook all the way through in your heat. Your heat, when I'm cooking at home, I have it at usually about 160 for frying. You don't want to get it too, too hot. Let's see if this is... And when it goes in, of course, it'll bubble. Induction's a little different. So. And after it, after it uh, fries for a little bit, it'll come to the top, and then that boil will start to slow down. When you really have no more bubbles anymore coming out and around the sides, you know that's when it's okay to try flip your bannock. Then you'll flip it again. Oh, this one's going. It's a little heavy for me today because of the no rise, so it's not coming up completely. But that bubble will start to slow down and then you know it's fried all the way through. If I went through this process, I'm going to leave this actually um, over at our booth. So if you are around a little bit more for an hour or so and you want to kind of take a look at, I'll leave it rise. And if anybody wants to take a look, you can kind of see how, fa how high it does go. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? No. You can eat it. I have, let's see how many we have here. I got more in the truck as well, but I did bring quite a few pieces over here. I've got about 30 pieces, I do believe. I'll take them all. <laughs> they were just fresh made um, at the restaurant. We brought them over about an hour ago. I have some jam here. I have some butter here and some, some knives. You guys are more than welcome to come and help yourself. There's napkins here. And if you have any questions at all.